Good morning. Today at Toronto Police Headquarters, Inspector Peter Marrera from the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force will update the public and the media on a guns and drug seizure. Inspector? Thank you. Good morning and thank you all for attending. I'm here this morning to inform the public of an investigation undertaken by the Toronto Police Service that led to the arrest of four individuals and led to the seizure of significant quantities of illicit drugs, along with firearms and associated ammunition. In late 2016, members of the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force commenced an investigation into persons suspected of possessing illicit firearms. As the investigation progressed, it became clear that the subjects were also involved in illicit narcotic sales. Over the course of several weeks, the gun and gang investigators collected evidence on the suspects. The investigation culminated in the execution of criminal code and Control Drugs and Substances Act search warrants. These warrants were executed during the evening hours of this past Sunday, January 15th. As a result of these warrants, the items that you see before you today were located and seized. All five addresses were residential properties located within the City of Toronto. Specifically, these items um, from these search warrants are as follows. A semi-automatic Glock 23 handgun capable of firing 40 cal uh, ammunition. A semi-automatic Glock 17 handgun capable of firing 9mm ammunition. Semi-automatic Cobra Enterprise 380 caliber handgun an Anderson AM-15 M4 semi-automatic rifle capable of firing 223 rounds, a Tika T3 bolt action rifle that fires 308 ammunition, a Robinson Arms XCR L semi-automatic rifle capable of firing 223 ammunition, and a Dagger SAP-6 pump action shotgun capable of firing 12 gauge ammunition. In terms of the ammunition seized, there was 135 rounds of 40 caliber, 99 rounds of 45 caliber, 12 rounds of 9 millimeter, 17 rounds of 380, and 105 rounds of 223 ammunition seized. That's a total of 368 rounds of ammunition that was seized. Also seized were four suspected prohibited over capacity firearms magazines. In terms of the uh, drugs that were seized, there was over a, a kilogram of powder cocaine along with used kilogram size stamped concrete packages indicative of high level trafficking. There was 15 grams of crack cocaine, 86 grams of heroin, 196 grams of MDMA, also known as ecstasy, 20 grams of oxycodone, and 234 grams of marijuana. The total estimated value of the seized drugs is close to $100,000, with the seized cocaine, the powder cocaine, representing the majority of this total, more than half. <clears throat> also seized, and part of our ongoing investigation was over $46,000 in Canadian currency. As a result of the investigation, the following individuals were arrested and charged. <clears throat> Kirash Parzam, 24 years of Toronto. Natasha Gorgan, 23 years of Toronto. Javid Samuel, 33 years of Toronto. And Trey Greaves, 21 years of Richmond Hill. Parzin, Gorgon, and Samuel face multiple weapons and drug-related charges, while Greaves faces drug-related charges only. A complete list of the charges has or, or will shortly be um, provided to all of you. I would like to acknowledge the outstanding work done by members of the Gun and Gang Task Force street level enforcement teams throughout this investigation. While you can see the gun and drug seizure is particularly substantial, it represents just one example of the type of work these officers perform normally unheralded and generally unreported on a daily basis. Their efforts, as evidenced by the display of the uh, firearms here and the ammunition and the drugs, is having a direct impact on community safety in our city. I will uh, now entertain some questions, but as you can uh, appreciate, this is now a matter before the court, so but there may be some issues that I uh, just can't get into. Can you talk about <coughs> the shootings or, or crimes in general, like that violent crimes that led to this investigation? 
this was information that we received that we were working on uh, specifically related to the possession of the firearms. There was, as the investigation is progressing right now, we haven't linked these directly to any shooting. Uh, but like all crime guns that we seize, there'll be um, forensic testing that will be conducted to determine what, if any, uh, other offenses that these items may have been involved in. A general sense of what these four were really up to, what were they doing? Um, there was narcotic sales, uh, primarily, and, uh, and we're alleging that uh, firearms were part of, of that business. The guns, too? Uh, well... That's, that still forms part of our investigation and it continues. But there was clearly the trafficking of narcotics and the possession of firearms, which is a dangerous mix. The four were they known to police? Um, two, two of the parties were known to police. No, it was uh, three males and one female. Can you speak about any possible gang involvement here? What gang you might have been involved in? Well, the investigation is continuing into that matter. Uh, there's nothing that at this point here is apparent that this was to further any uh, gang activity. Um, but uh, clearly there's, there's many associations that are present in the drug trade. And so we're, we're still exploring that. We're working with our partners uh, in different areas to, you know, determine that very point. And one was from Richmond Hill. Are you, is that part of the area where you're located now for uh, more associates or anybody else who might be involved? Uh, uh, crime in today's day and age is borderless. Uh, we're, we're, we work with people all over Canada and internationally uh, as a matter of routine. As for the seizures, uh, was it the residences? Whereabouts were they? Um, predominantly in the downtown core, and there was one in the Allen and Shepherd Road area. How many of the do you characterize as being? Well, anytime you have... Uh, this quantity of, of, of drugs and, and, and these kind of firearms, it's, it's significant. Um, uh, even the removal of one gun is significant to public safety. Um, you, you know, you add to that 368 rounds of ammunition, um, one can only imagine what havoc that could wreak throughout the city, so. As, as far as you're concerned, are there other suspects you're looking for connected to this, or is this pretty much done? The investigation's continuing. There, there could be, yes. Inspector, the, the, the quality and the types of guns that you've seized here, these, these look specifically like the sort of guns that you're going to want if you're running a street gang or you're enforcing something for doing it. Have you found, or are you going to be looking into it, there's a commonality of how they were able to shop for and acquire these type of weapons? I mean, this looks different than the odd time to see an old handgun or an old farm rifle or something like that. Um, these... Firearms, like every firearm that uh, we seize as an organization, um, is uh, carefully researched, and we uh, attempt to track all of our firearms to determine the very points, to see where gaps exist, uh, where um, you know uh, people intent on, on carrying these firearms obtain them in the first place. So, uh, all of those things are, are still form part of our ongoing investigation. Yeah. And does it appear that to you that, for the most part, these guns were acquired? to protect and deal with their drug trade as opposed to their trafficking and selling them around the city at this point? Um, that, that's hard for me to, to, to say definitively. Uh, certainly that forms part of our investigation. I, I, the only thing I can tell you is that um, there was drugs and guns found together. Pretty common. Uh, unfortunately becoming increasingly more common. How long did you say this uh, group was operating? Um, well, our investigation commenced in late 2016, so, uh, you know, how, how I, I don't really know the answer to that question at this point. Um, that does form part of our investigation in determining who else is associated to them and how long they've been conducting this kind of uh, operation. Any idea if those guns were stolen or where the guns came from? Um, that forms part of our ongoing investigation. We're certainly looking into uh, that. I can tell you that we have some initial reports that at least one of them was uh, a stolen firearm. You started the investigation into the guns themselves, not the drugs, but was it somebody see the guns? How did you come to, to know about the guns? Uh, I, I can't get into that at this point. How did you come to know about any of this? Is there something that you can reveal to us as to have, what led you to, to start following and investigating this ring? Uh, no, I can't. I can't comment on that. I'm sorry. 
rifles, is, is there something unusual about uh, them using rifles as well? What's with the rifles? Uh, I, I don't know. I, the higher the capacity and, and, and caliber of the firearm, I, I, you know, I, I, one can only guess at why they chose these guns. Uh, perhaps it's the availability. But that all forms part of our investigation at this point to determine uh, what attracted uh, these individuals to these particular firearms. You know, I'd to have a rifle with such a large scope on it like this one. That's not a close range type weapon. How would someone possibly do that? Drug trade. Yeah, again, that forms part of our investigation. I, these are dangerous, dangerous uh, firearms, and uh, coupled with the ammunition, um, it, it's it's obviously concerning. But this is the type of work that our our uh, men and women go out there and are engaged in every single day to determine. And and when I talk about unheralded and underreported, uh, that is absolutely true. Uh, the men and women of the uh, Gun and Gang Task Force are seizing firearms. Um, almost on a daily basis, and uh, they, they seize a lot of firearms. Uh, certainly uh, not seven at one time, but it's not unusual to find uh, two um, guns or three guns in any one investigation. So I'd say these would be allegedly mid-level drug traffickers? Uh, that still forms part of our investigation to determine exactly where they fit in into the hierarchy of, of drug trafficking throughout the city, yes. through last year, record number of shootings, shooting victims. Uh, it's going up, it's great you got these, uh, got these guns. Uh, did you seize more guns last year than you have in a long time? And what's the outlook gonna be coming up? I mean, you've got all kinds of pressures in the police department, and yet we're seeing a rise in shootings and guns. And uh, I think the people of Toronto and the GTA are happy that you got these off, but we, I think we need to be assured that we're gonna continue to work to get more of these guns off the street. Um, well, that, that is the commitment of every police officer in this city. I can tell you that there's a coordinated effort. It's not just uh, blind luck. Uh, their, their information is received and it's, it's worked on and uh, evidence is collected. And, and when we meet a threshold, we go out and we execute search warrants and we seize as many as we can. Um, uh, while I, I, I appreciate um, that um, you know, shootings are increasing, our job squarely in our job in the gun and gang task force is squarely centered on preventing these things from happening in the first place by engaging these type of activities and removing 368 rounds of ammunition from the street and the firearms that are capable of firing them uh, th that is countless shootings that we have prevented and you know i can remind everybody here and having worked in the homicide squad i realize that lives change on both sides of that trigger so um, we're, we're saving people from themselves, really, in many cases, and certainly the people who would be the intended victims of this. The warrants, as they were carried out, uh, were they uneventful? Was there any, uh, anything they uh, Note that they were executed uh, with very little issues, um, and our, our officers are experienced in obviously executing warrants, and it's a, a carefully planned out uh, sequence of events that, that happen, and uh, it's done to minimize any um, danger to anyone involved, including the police officers and, and the suspects that we're after. The suspects were all found in separate locations? Uh, they, they were found at two different locations, yes. We have all these, you know, these punks, these gangs, picking up these high-powered weapons and guns. And I know something about shooting guns. I know most police officers know something. Where are these guys going out and training? Have they got range? Where are they going off to learn how to even shoot these things? Or is that something that you can't even really speak about? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I you know, uh, this group in, in particular, the investigation continues, and, and perhaps we're going to learn uh, that. Um, you know, it, it, it's obviously concerning. But more than likely, they probably didn't even know how to use these guns, you think? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't begin to answer that question. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Sir, can you say and spell your name and your rank? Sure, it's Inspector Peter, P-E-T-E-R, Morera, M-O-R-E-I-R-A. Uh, that still forms part of our investigation, and uh, in terms of, of the people that uh, we've arrested. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That concludes today's conference. Thank you.